okay. Uh, so today uh, we are going to talk about uncoupled roll motion, okay. The last part or last lecture on this uncoupled motion. As you know the role we are defining it, role is essentially dynamic hill. Okay. Again the form of the equation looks exactly same, we end up having I, but here it is I xx rigid body plus delta I xx phi dot dot plus you can say B phi phi dot plus C phi phi equal to M well we can say just the same equation of motion and once again all single single degree equation of motions have the similar look. So, we have here added moment of inertia in roll mode, we have damping in roll mode, we have restoring force in roll mode. This is if I were to write added roll moment of inertia, this is roll damping, this is roll restoring moment. Okay. So, form is exactly same, there is just nothing that we need to worry about, obviously it will have its natural frequency omega phi once again given by square root of C phi y i x x plus delta i x x which is very important. The equation of motion solution looks exactly same as phi will look going like that, coming like that etcetera. This is the natural. So, there is nothing to it. Okay, the, as far as this part is concerned, the solution there is nothing to it. We all have studied that same as in roll, same as in pitch, same as in heave. What we need to of course, talk about relative magnitude that how do I estimate these values and what is the kind of natural period at what range it lies etcetera etcetera. So, we will start with this. I x x you see now we have this shape and x axis is this one if I had to draw a section x axis is going through this this is my b let us say. So, I x x of course is mass into k x x square okay what would be a good guess for k x that is the question i will want to ask you remember k x is radius of gyration about this axis now in case of pitch we took k y y as around 0.25 l 0.3 l but here of course it is a function of b because k x is the mass of this all this masses into the distance square. Now, what happened obviously in a ship you have the shell plate. Now, supposing it was only the shell plate I would have had my radius, radius of gyration located at that point itself, but of course I have also inside many things. So, what I mean to say therefore, you can guess that it is going to lie somewhere towards this side it is not going to be 0.25 b or you know uh, uh, this is being b here this is half p it is not going to be 0.25 b it is going to be more than that it is going to be hanging towards more like 0.5 b. So, a good estimate that have turned out to be approximately 0.35 b so you can take it in nothing is given as 0.40 b. Please understand that we are in an engineering course we require to make good judgments. In case of a 
longitudinal mass moment of inertia I took my KYY to be approximately at 0 0.25, 0 0.3 because mass was distributed more or less along the length per section. Of course, it is slightly less as you go forward. But in this case, it is like a hollow cylinder. If it was a hollow cylinder, I would have had my radius of gyration at 0.25, at 0.5 B. But of course, it has got many weights inside here and all that. So, it will pull down, but it will not pull down so much. As a result, you will see these numbers, they are more towards outside, 40 percent of B approximately. So, that is a good estimate, that is what I want to tell you. Supposing I want to make that, well, you cannot say exactly what, I, there are empirical formulas, if there is time, I will mention the empirical formulas, but otherwise it is in that range if you want to make an estimate. Remember once again this I x x is mass moment of inertia, it is not to be connected to I t that you use in uh, you know like uh, GM and metacentric height study. Okay. Now, look at this added moment of inertia. Now, uh, this is another thing that you pay attention, we, I want you to pay attention to. Suppose, it was a cylinder and I rotating it about this point. Tell me what would be the moment of inertia for this, added moment of inertia. We have discussed that and that is why I am asking you, suppose there was a fluid particle here, a fluid particle here, fluid particle here. When the body rotates, does it get accelerated? The answer is no because we are talking of non-viscous flow. As a result, if it is semicircle and you have got you know rotation point exactly here, you have practically no well, you have 0, theoretically 0 added moment of inertia. So, now it is not semicircle really, but it is something else. You still expect the added moment of inertia to be extremely small, because naturally you do not disturb that. See, if I push it down in heave mode or in a pitch mode also gets pushed down, it gets much more pushed down. But in roll mode, you really expect very less water to be disturbed. It is only logical to think. So, obviously, my this term delta E x x, which I can write, you see I, I can write it two ways, I can write it to be the delta dash k x x square, where I can think as if, you know, in if, if I write it that way, then my I x x plus delta E x x, they become delta plus delta dash k x x square, I can write it this way, or I can write uh, delta E x x as delta into k, well I can write other way I am sorry, i x x plus this thing as delta into k dash x x square. Thinking that there is an augmentation of this or augmentation of mass, it is a both way the same thing. Okay, it is a question of uh, you know like describing this as a mass into x square. Now, what, what happens is that it turns out to be the delta x x therefore, if you want to estimate is a small number. It turns out to be as if delta dash is something like 10 to 20 percent of delta or if you do k dash x x, it becomes all like 1.05 to 1.10 times of k x x because when you are squaring it remember k x x square approximately. So, the effect of this added moment of inertia in roll is very small 10, 20 percent. So, even if you ignored it, not much of you know like difference occurs in your estimation. What I am therefore telling added moment of inertia in roll is not a very significant number, which is obvious from the picture. Come in heave added mass was it can be two to three times the mass. In pitch mode, it was same almost same or more than the rigid body moment of inertia, but in here it is only 10 20 percent of rigid body moment of inertia. So, see the difference, it is order of magnitude lower than corresponding added moment of inertia in pitch mode. So, even if you ignored it, you will not be too much off from a practical estimate, that is an important point. Okay. Now, we will have to talk about damping, damping becomes extremely important uh, as we know, uh, if I were to look now this picture, you see this zone dominated by damping, the peak part slightest damping also will bring it down. Now, the thing is that here if I look at this picture once again, well added mass and damping I kept on telling added moment of inertia and damping are two parts of the same coin. So, if this is disturbing very less the fluid, obviously the damping is also going to be very less that is my potential inviscid damping. So, if damping is extremely less, 
obviously this is going to be very high in fact damping is very less uh, you know uh, generally speaking. So, damping is a very very important concept for ships. Now, what happened here comes this typical question you see in all modes of motion I presume that water is non viscous ok. I used the damping also based on non viscous theory you may question why it is non viscous. So, the well there is always a question the answer was that well viscosity has very less influence on the forces because most of the cases the forces are normal forces as it push down fluid is trying to push up normal force it is not really going along, along it. So, the viscous effect is very low excepting for roll modes of motion in roll modes of motion what happened when I turn it here you see this corner if a it, it, it is rotating. Now, a fluid particle cannot just go around it theoretically also because it cannot go around the corner. So, what will happen it will separate out why does it separate because it cannot stick to it and the separation is only a because of viscosity without vis a without being viscous flow cannot separate out you if I have a sharp corner if I rotate it I oscillate it from this corner there is flow separation. Therefore, this is the only mode of motion where viscous force becomes important. How does viscous force act? Viscous force is always proportional to displacement and therefore, it is considered to be damping force. Any viscous force you will write down if any viscous force on moment in this case is proportional to displacement. So, what happened roll is the only mode of motion where viscosity plays a very crucial role not only that on top of that what we will be doing or people do it is that do you deliberately introduce here bilge kill plates why do you do that because you want to actually introduce or increase damping why we do that so that my resonant peak this this peak comes down significantly remember I will show you the role role modes otherwise damping radiation damping is very low if you were to run a computer program you will find this role this peak going to be very high giving a role of 50 degree 80 degree 90 degree like that because this becomes very high practically because compared to heave and pitch my radio in visit damping roll damping is very very low. So, but however, there is some roll damping for viscosity even that is roll because roll is the only mode you will find out that if I were to start a body rolling it will keep on going for a long time very long time you know like if I just displace it say 10 degree and leave my hand it will keep on going rolling for a very long time. The decay is very small that shows you you know this decay is e power of minus nu t we have seen it very small damping. So, we will come back to this damping issue little later, uh, but let me first talk about the natural period and then we will come back to damping issue. Because roll for roll once again I want to tell you we are talking of heave, pitch and roll. In heave we have discussed all about the nature of the single degree freedom equation and its solution. Same solution exists for pitch and roll. Now that when I come to roll I should only speak about what are the characteristic of roll modes of motion compared to the other well one of the important thing is damping very low damping which gives a very li uh, large uh, peak roll. So, peak period is very important we there is small viscous damping now for prediction I need to know the viscous damping we deliberately introduce a bilge kill typically for a shape to introduce additional viscous damping. So, that this kind of gives you a viscous damping to lower down lower the period etcetera. So, we will get back to this viscous damping part because roll is the only mode of motion where viscosity is an important you cannot ignore it. Now, I wanted to get back to that after I speak about the natural period. Now, let us see about natural periods or C phi. Now, see C phi by phi is my restoring moment. Now, I know that if I were have a small angle displacement then my this thing is rho g v which is of course, w into z z which is g m t into phi this is nothing but gz. We all agree with that w gz is my restoring moment 
z0 is gmt into phi. So, therefore, this part is my c phi that is c phi ok. Now, let us look at natural frequency and let us put directly a period. So, period is of course, 2 pi root over of i plus delta i i ok. So, that I can write this to be mass into k dash x x square or other way around at 1.1 mass into k x square let me write or rather let me write it that way only. Uh, let me write it this or it will be easier to do. Sorry. We will work this out in, in steps. So, I will go back to this thing. So, T phi 2 pi. So, mass plus m dash i let me put 1.1 time this thing you know some some uh, fact or let us say put some factor maybe uh, let us see uh, some f into mass mass is rho into v this is actually around 1.1 1.2 as I said look at this what I am saying is doing is once again this part m plus m dash I am writing this as f into rho into this is my m and this f is actually around 1.1 ok. Mass plus see m plus m dash k x square we have we have talked about that is as if mass has been augmented the augmentation is only about 10 percent 20 percent. So, I can write this as f into mass mass is rho into v f may be around 1.1 1.2 it is easier to do that way divided by here I have got rho g v into g m t oh sorry here I have got k x x square ok. So, this turns out to be 2 pi see uh, no here there is rho, this gets off. So, I have got a, basically I say k k x x square into f by g into g m t let me write this as 2 pi k x square root of let us take this f as 1.1. So, outside maybe 1.1 or rather let me put it as 1.1 only say 1 point around 1.1 or so. This is the kind of values we get ok. So, right now let us you, you may have been knowing about this, but I want to work out the numbers for a typical ship. So, that we have an understanding what is happening. Let us take, take a guess. Okay, let us take a ship of B approximately give me a number of typical ship say your 200 meter ship or so 40 meter 40 meter, four zero. a big ship right yeah. means say B is 40 meter you are saying. So, this will be approximately a large tanker or something right yeah, huh? yeah okay, say some 250 meter long ship fine. Then K x s will be approximately how much so, 0 0.4 times B that is going to be 16 or so say 0 0.4 b 16. How much you will take g m t here? No, 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 no. See whether you i by v or not remember it i by v will give you b m t, but we want g m t ok. Metacentric height typically maybe 2 meter or so for this kind of ship 2 or 3 meter will be there ok. Let us say 2 or 3 meter 2 to 3 meter say. So, I want to figure this out how much, how much this comes out to be there 2 pi into about 16 into root over of say 1.1 I write it is a 10 into say 2. How much this comes out to be can you tell me well 1 by 20, 20 is approximately 4 and a half 1 by 4 means 4 how much this comes out to be. The actually 2 may be too small it may be 3 for such a large ship because you are looking at a very large ship remember 40 meter breadth ship. So, 3 would be probably better I mean I would think so smaller ship will be much lesser, but if you work it out maybe I let us put it 3 30 1 by 30 square root is about 5 and a half or so. Uh, so, if it is 5 and a half or so 3 
6, 6 into three, about 18 a second or so you are getting right, 17, 18 seconds, whatever. In this case you are getting normally, but this is for a very large vessel. This also explains why large boats are more comfortable. If you are to take a much smaller boat, you will find out this will become smaller, but this will also become much smaller, okay. And you might end up getting actually roll period for typical small boats, maybe again about 8, 10 seconds for small vessels, okay. What I want to see here is this thing, T phi is proportional to, this of course all of you know it, K x by root g m t, this everybody knows, okay. Or actually I can say now proportional to root over g m t. This is the typical case for a ship. For stability I want g m t to be high, but if I have g m t high my T phi becomes low. Now for small boats specially it turns out that if the T phi is actually 8 second or so or you are not comfortable. People are comfortable if T phi is around 15 second or more. Typically a ship which has high GMT gives you low phi, this is known as stiff ship that I think you would have known that in your design calculation and the other, other way down would be a soft ship. Now the problem that occurs, this is one of those uh, you know like balancing thing that you need to do. See you take a naval ship, in the naval ship really the comfort is very less important, okay or if even if you take a cargo, let us take a cargo ship also, so it's only the you know crew are going. In such a cases comfort being less important you might afford to have higher GM because you do not mind lower T phi. But passenger ship where the st stability becomes an even more important issue, the rules and regulations are more, you have a problem of deciding GMT because actually you would want to have larger GMT. However, you end up getting larger GMT giving you a lower T phi which people do not want to go on because you do not want to go on a ship which is lower than 16 seconds or so. Typically it is not comfortable because rolling is much more rampant than pitching. As a result you have to have a balance between the two. So when you are doing a design you actually need to balance this two, especially for a passenger craft. You do not want it too small, too uh, large GMT but you cannot just keep on increasing GMT simply because you think that is more safe. So increasing GMT may be of safety but beyond a point you should not increase it. That is the main point I am trying to tell you right now, you know you cannot increase GMT arbitrarily beyond a point because if you do that you end up getting much much uncomfortable ship. This is a, a typical problem that you have for a, in, in the design in one of those uh, kind of design uh, you know like you will say balancing act that one needs to do. Uh, let us talk a little bit about this damping part uh, now, one, uh, getting back to the damping part. W what we said is that this damping, if I were to write down now equation of motion again, let me write down again one, I want to say this this way. See this damping B phi. say m. Now this part, so I, I can have two part, one is b phi phi dot, uh, well you can say b 1 phi phi dot, one is say b, let me call it r phi dot, v phi phi dot. So this is my radiation damping, potential damping, inviscid damping. And this is my viscous damping. This is much more important as I said because I said that this is very small. This also is small actually relatively but at least compared to that it is not so small. Now see the question is that because damping is very very important, very very important as far as roll motion is concerned because if you see if I did I ignored it 
as I said if you do a prediction you will end up finding that a resonance period I have a role which is something like you know non feasible 95 degree 100 degree like that. You may end up getting because your damping is very low radiation damping suppose you are writing a computer program you know suppose I, I will tell you about this B5 uh, estimate earlier o okay let me uh, uh, say that uh, 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 right uh, you know just next. This is my viscous damping. Let me say I ignore viscous damping. One of the way of estimating radiation damping would be again a strip theory. So I have remember that I have done this shape in various strips. So each strip I have actually various equations and various modes of calculation of their theoretical solution about added mass in this direction. Similarly, added mass in this also is available. So as I said earlier, theoretically, you know, if you take a semicircle added mass in heave is equal to the displacement of this in deep water and rot rotational inertia is 0. So, there if you make it by some transformation those information is available based on the similar kind of graph and charts. So, I can always integrate that sectional added uh, you know like 2D added this thing uh, and along the length I can I can get my 3D radiation damping for roll motion. Now, if I do that I will end up getting a number. And if I use that number in this equation and solve it, I will end up getting a resonance peak which will become very high. It will probably go to you know un unrealistically high number. Why it is so? Because the role potential or radiation or inviscid damping coefficient is extremely low, almost 0. Okay. The, however, we know that it is not so. So, therefore, this damping becomes very important. Now, this damping estimating this damping is very difficult because it is a viscous phenomena. If I want to estimate this damping, I have to solve a Navier-Stokes equation, a viscous flow equation remember not a potential flow equation. So, very difficult. So, what is the standard would be to determine this damping of course, overall damping because uh, you know you cannot separate out by experiment. So, you do an experiment to find out this is a very common thing to do that, but what experiment? Now, go back to this uh, uh, our previous lecture we re recall that when we did this this part of damping that is the radiation damping that is the potential damping we found it is a function of omega remember that is why the force oscillation test was done it depends on at what frequency you are oscillating. However, here what happened this damping turns out to be fairly insensitive of omega the potential damping. Once again you must get that in your mind see radiation damping is as I oscillate it the wave it makes see if I take this body if I oscillate it it, the, it makes these waves. The energy that has gone dissipated in the waves is the radiation damping. In fact, you will very easily find out that if I took a body and pushed it there is some waves, but if I just rolled it any this thing the wave that it creates is very low you cannot even see it which essentially would imply that the energy that has gone away by this inviscid you know like theory making waves is very low. Okay. That means this part of damping is very low. Of course, this part of damping theoretically is dependent on frequency, but our interest is practical. We want to know what is the total damping for the ship for which it turns out this is more important. Then this part is not so frequency dependent. Therefore, I can now do a very simple so called decay test which is what is typically done. What is the decay test? It is very simple. You take a body or shift it to some angle, leave your hand what you will find you will find that the role is becoming keep on going for a long time for a very long time you can do a test. Now, why we could not do this for uh, uh, heave and pitch added mass because this test would give you the heave damping and added mass only for that frequency natural period so called damp natural period, but here I could do that because damping that I am looking for. I am thinking it is not function of frequency. So, this is a test very simple and uh, uh, you know like 
In fact, people do like most hydrodynamic lab, this test is always done. This is what is called roll decay test. This is my extin ex extinction curve. You just oscillate to some point, leave your hand, it will keep on decaying. And in fact, you will find out that if, if I were to superpose here a typical, uh, you know, like uh, heave, you will see he would become, become like that. In two oscillations, it will become like that. If you just push your body down, you will see in two oscillations, go like that. That actually shows that heave damping is much more even from potential point of view. But roll damping is even with the uh, viscosity very low. And the, this is, I repeatedly saying this because this is very important because without this damping, if you are to predict motion, you would not get a good prediction at the resonance period. So this, now how do I find this uh, damping out? Actually, I will not go through the theory, but supposing I measure these peaks here, okay. So I, I can find out say theta 1, theta 2, etc. I can find out the decay part. Let me just write it down from here. See if I were find out see here theta 1 a, theta 2 a, etc. Then I can find out theta mean per oscillation, n nth oscillation that will be something like half of say phi 1 a plus phi 2 a. They are of course decaying it, right. That is the mean period is decaying it, again oscillation period n, okay. It turns out that if I were to plot that here, what is my phi? mean, amplitude of phi mean against n, it actually decays. It, in fact, we, this will be decaying, but what we do is, if we want to, we plot d phi by d n, it basically will be decaying minus, because in other words, what happened? It turns out that d phi mean amplitude by d n is equal to k into phi m. We can fit a graph like that actually here we can put phi m here if I put this one. And it turns out from basically from energy balance, see here what is happening is that because of damping it amplitude comes down. So, we can have a energy conservation principle about work done by the damping force and work done by this restoring force etcetera. It turns out that by, by doing this balance, again I am not going to this uh, uh, the derivation, you will see that d phi by d n turns out to be pi square b is this thing t phi into delta into g m t into phi m. So, from there since I know g m t delta etcetera and I know this this thing, this is actually k, this k I found out. So, you see this this part that is this this, this is my damping, this is my v phi. See so this part is nothing but this k. So, therefore, B phi can be found out as T k into T phi delta into G m T by pi square. Or what I want to say here is you know without going through this that an extinction test is a very important test that is always done. The test is very simple, you probably would be doing in your lab also. Simply keep it rolled leave your hand, it will keep on decaying and you get a very nice curve. You will see that you get a very nice curve for many oscillation, it will keep on uh, oscillating. You just want to know how much it is decaying, okay. And this decay obviously as you know is e power of minus nu t, basically you can also relate this decay to be e power of minus nu t, this nu is actually b by 2 a. We have seen this earlier all. So, from there easily we can find out from the decay the damping, the, the b part. Now, that there are various now uh, theories of uh, you know, relations to get that uh, B, which is one, one of which I showed there are other ways of fitting that graph also. So, the question is that you do find the damping here and the damping is extremely important and it is this reason why almost all ships will have a bilge kill, almost all ships will have a bilge kill. You will see that you always put a bilge kill at the middle, where do you put the bilge kill? That is another thing you put, put exactly at the bilge. In fact, for typical shape, we are calling this to be bilge area. Remember this to be bilge area and you always put it here. Why? Because you get the maximum leverage. You see when it is rolling here, it gives you maximum 
the uh, damping effect because of this. Damping of course in roll it turned out to be a much more complex thing because it turns out that it also depends on speed, it also depends on many other phenomena etcetera etcetera. And nowadays in con this is a this is one way of what is known as passive device to control roll, passive because you do not do anything. But there are ships coming up where in the in the ship you would put some kind of fin outside, a fin which will actually control the fin to reduce pitch as well as roll etcetera etcetera. They are all becoming part of it because you do not want large motions, people do not want to be on, on a ship. Now I want to tell you about another, another part of this uh, characteristic of roll motion. Once again we have to go back to this and you see here this part of roll I want. Let us take a wave. Now at low, low frequency what happens? I have a static roll flag is here, flag is here. Okay, like that. Always remember once again, I, I am looking at a beam wave because you expect obviously largest roll to be at beam wave. Means beam means the wave is coming from you know the, the ship is here and waves are coming from this side. You expect largest roll. So, in a beam wave, let us say typically at low frequency, that is, if the wave is very large, then the ship is going to behave this way because it will just like in a pitch what we have seen it follow the contour, but the problem happens in the other end. This end you end up getting an opposite face, well I cannot plot properly perhaps. you can clearly see why it is so much more dangerous right very you can call it hydrostatic roll now normally what happened once again this interesting part you see this will happen not only low frequency also you can say at high metacentric height if gm is high this see uh, an important distinction see in each mode of motion and heap mode of motion we only talk of frequency because waves are much longer. But in here typically restoring force should dominate. Okay. Now restoring force will dominate, suppose restoring force dominates, you see this uh, once again the equation of motion, remember the equation of motion will look like omega square into added masses into phi plus or plus or minus i omega into damping into phi plus restoring moment into phi equal to m. Now, if this, this is nothing but proportional to GMT, right. If this is very high, even for some omega is very high, obviously this will dominate. Okay. Remember that in a ship GML, you do not, it is already high, but you do not change it by factor of 2, etcetera, etcetera. So, we have already seen that, but GMT can become half a meter, can become 2 meter or, or 1 meter. GMT have proportion wise GMT have a chance of changing more widely because it is a small number by itself. 50 centimeter to 1 meter is factor of 2 whereas a GML which is 150 meter will not become 200 meter it might be 180 meter you understand that. So as a result what happened GMT has a more influence. So here what happened when my GMT is high my vessel is safe you have this kind of rolling you can say this will happen at high GMT low T phi. In other words this is actually uh, if I were to write this way this one is GMT is high T phi is low and of course you can say omega is also low. This one is on the other hand GMT is low T phi is obviously these two are connected and omega can also be slightly high. In fact I am just discarding the omega part but I am saying this nature from point of view of GMT. So, what happened is that if GMT was high there is a tendency for the vessel to align itself to the wave which of course is safer. You 
what is this? You can study this purely by hydrostatics because it is hydrostatic rolling. In other words, if I were to look at that, basically what has happened, there is a restoring, it is like I have healed it, there is a restoring moment that has made it back parallel to this line. See here, if I were the, if the vessel was initially like that, my something like this, you know, let me also show this here, something like uh, my vessel was like that initially, water line is like that, my, my, my water line has become like this. The water line become like that, my vessel will also turn to like that, right. It will just try to because it is very slow, it is trying to because the restoring moment is very high, it will there is no phase, it will try to go up that way. But so that means this will what will happen at very high, uh, you know, restoring moment, very low natural period also means that very quickly it will turn. T5 low means it can is the ability to turn very fast, the restoring moment is too large uncomfortable but safe. This one on the other hand, when I have got GMT low, T5 is high, then I end up having this. Now you see the problem that, that we have. You want to have your design shape more or less in this range because this is more, more um, uh, comfortable for a ship. So you want to have a more comfortable ship, so therefore you want to be an, in operating this range. So you do not want uh, GMT to be too high, but if GMT is not very high, then there is a chance of it is getting into the waves. So there is a risk factor more. So therefore, from role design point of view, you have to actually have a very proper, you know, like thinking. You cannot make a stiff ship, but if you want to make a soft ship, then you have to be careful regarding that it does not become dangerous. So therefore, you, what people do, you actually introduce damping. What is happening by damping, what happened? The amplitude is reduced normally and slightly the period, but amplitude is reduced. This is actually brought down. This is the reason why you have this damping uh, devices coming up in the roll. Instead of rolling 15 degree, you make it roll say 7 degree. Remember period does not change much because damping B is as such small number. So, omega with damp, damping and omega without damping does not differ very much. What differs is the amplitude. You would have rolled something like this. Now, phi would have been something like this, you actually bring it down to this essentially. And that is the reason why you have uh, so many kind of roll stabilizing devices, you know, which will in future lecture we will talk active device, passive device, you know, now this control like all kind of fins you put for controlling it. Essentially, because you of course, one thing is that if amplitude is less, your acceleration is going to be less, you, you also will have a, uh, you know, a more comfort, uh, it will be more comfortable, okay. So this is about the static rolling, okay. Now uh, let me just talk about some uh, empirical formula that we have. I thought I will just spend this other time on this uh, finding out this added mass and roll moment of inertia. Having said this 0 0.4, 0 0.45, since we have little time, we probably thought of uh, you know, doing uh, this. Uh, do that one. Let me think about uh, the the phase gap part. Uh, we'll, let me just spend a little more time on this. See here, one thing we are finding out that all of them, if you look at a phase, you know, all this theoretically. At this region, the phase is basically out of phase with waves. Here, it goes in un, it, it is it, sorry in this in in phase with waves. At this point, it actually goes 180 degree change, and here it becomes out of phase with waves. Now, the good point of we have seen in heave and pitch is that in this low frequency, the starting point differs. In heave, the phase is with the crest as crest goes up and up, down it goes up and down. But in pitch, it is with a slope. Here also, it is with a slope at this, but slope in the other plane. Remember, if the waves are coming straight forward, really speaking, you have very uh, low roll. You expect roll to be much more when it is coming beam wise. So, it is slope from beam wise. So, in a sense, there is some difference in the phases between the three signals. And that is how you want it, because if you, you do not want it to have same phase when everything is occurring very high that we should realize and that tells me that 
if I were to draw pictures, if he was like that, you want peach something like that and you want roll something like that. And there will be relative phases between the, uh, between the various signals. Okay. Of course, you cannot say that when it will be so, but phase always is an important parameter to be found out when you are doing a solution. That without phase, we really cannot, you know, like um, say the history of the motion. And all we are talking is uncoupled motion. When we will talk of coupled motion, we will find out that there is more complication. Okay, let me just uh, uh, spend this uh, rest of the time by telling about this uh, some empirical formula which maybe you will find useful for determining the moment of inertia, added moment of inertia and moment of inertia for ship. So, I have this I x x plus delta I x x, it is written as here mass into k x x dash square and there are some formulas given for this, that is what I wanted to tell. I wanted a thinner pen, all of them are same. See, this is only to tell you some idea regarding, you know, several empirical formula that has been developed H e square. So, some, some kind of formula where why I am saying this is because you know you, I would expect and we will we can do some problems where these are all par, part of ship parameters. So, for your, your some typical shape you can estimate this and you can actually determine the natural period from GMT etcetera etcetera. is upper deck area coefficient is area by length into breadth deck area coefficient uh, H e is effective depth of ship superstructure. This depth that is given by D plus A by L B P I is just for your reference only. D of course, is small dead breadth A I, let me just write it down then we will discuss it projected Okay, LBP is LBP. T is draft. And F is a constant.
see what I just wrote here you know like you did not be uh, so worried about this uh, in a sense it is just to tell you that there are some empirical formulas available based on ships uh, for initial uh, you know initially people have done it to estimate this. But I tell you I want to just so this is not a it is just in case you want to do an estimate but having said that you can always take this kx by b to power 0.4 okay for first estimate. Now, let me just sum up because today I, I want to complete this uh, single degree of freedom that this natural period which I always consider most important see what we end up getting let us see here T of heave we write this three formula down and we want to do this time uh, they are quickly for a barge all the three to know how, how they are for a typical ship. So, one example we took earlier was for a very large tanker for which you end up getting 18 second but you know let us take some smaller 100 uh, meter barge or so. So, this was 2 pi here you see we will take this factor k into added mass factor in hip let us say into uh, it was kz into mass right mass was rho g v here into rho g a w p no not rho g v g rho v sorry sorry let me write it down 2 pi square root of this is Allen mass factor k z into rho gets cancelled out volume by g into a w p. This was a formula when k z was maybe 1 or 2 something like that k z was added mass factor how many times of the mass is this rho gets cancelled out. So, g this thing now t of pitch 2 pi here again I write some this k factor you know like k let us say theta factor into remember we had here k y y square into mass right this is my i divided by here we had rho g v into g m l right this is what we had this is this part was i y y k theta is that factor plus the delta y y and here I have got rho g v into g m l. So, if again this I will if this cancels out this comes out to be 2 pi k y I can take it out square root of and t of roll similarly it was 2 pi k x x k of this thing into g g m l m t. See here what what you notice is that now we can make this estimate for this if you want I, I think we will not have time here. Now see this part uh, I, I understand this this look at this added mass part this may be 1 2 or so important you cannot no, sorry not 1 2 2 3 because it is already 1, one plus you know like 1 2 3 2 3 2 and a half 3 etcetera cannot be ignored absolutely you have to take some value 2 or so similar is this but this is very close to 1 that is point 1 see here it is kyy and gml okay this is kxx and gmt kyy is a function of length typically gml is also function of length so there is a length length function there and more or less it is of some order 10 12 15 second this is the function of b this also is a function of b. So, again this is also of similar order. So, what it what it turns out is again we have we have seen earlier this two also of similar order. So, if, if you look at order all of them are ranging between say 8 to say 14 second or so I mean something like that it is all within all of the three of them is within the everyday occurring waves. This is the problem see whether it is roll whether it is pitch whether it is heap all of them lie somewhere where, where I have the everyday waves coming. It is not like offshore structure where I am deliberately designing it to be far off even roll. So, having said that our aim would be this two point of view of low motion this the low motion is okay, but more importantly the natural period to be made slightly higher because of comfort point of view because mostly if if you go to any vessel it, it is roll is much more because the amount of rolling is much more for the simple reason that the damping is very low 
you end up having a roll of say 6 degree, 5 degree etc. which is not never so. Okay. So, this is where I will end this now uh, our talk on this single degree of freedom equation of motion, but this point is extremely important and we have to always remember this the typical shape you cannot avoid it offshore structure you have avoided it and these two are uh, you know like uh, uh, comparable for offshore structure. So, with that we will uh, end it for today's class. Thank you.